Hey everyone, I am Polket and back with another video on iOS development. Today we are going to be diving into the most essential feature of all iOS developer and that is auto layout constraints in Swift. Whether you are building application for iPad, iPhone or Mac, you will need to use auto layout constraint to make sure your application is compatible with all the resolution and it really looks good on the UI. So first let's talk about what is auto layout. Auto layout is Apple's way of helping developers to make a UI which is compatible with all the Apple devices such as iPhone, iPad, iPod and the Mac OS. It allows developers to create an interfaces which is compatible with all the different size classes. So it means the component that you have defined with auto layout would be compatible with iPhone, iPad and the Mac OS. But the question remains why auto layout is so much important the answer is you may create a ui or a component that fits in one device but what about the other resolutions so to make a design which is compatible with all the resolution inside apple's ecosystem you must use auto layout with auto layout it will make sure the design component will stay at the same location even if user changes the orientation of the phone. That's what makes auto layout constraint so powerful. Now let's check out how you can add the constraint with your storyboard. I'm gonna name it as auto layout soft demo. I don't need to select any team. Here I'm gonna select storyboard because we are not gonna be writing any code. It's gonna be completely based on the storyboard and then select next let me store it to the desktop so here i have the export um, now let me just change the target version and let's set it to iphone ios 15.0 So this is how my storyboard looks like. Uh, let's see first how it looks on the app and then we will start adding some UI components and then uh, we will play with the auto layout constraint. Okay, so this is how our application looks as of now. It's, it's completely empty. There is a no label, there's no text. So let's play, let's start playing with auto layout. First, I'm gonna add some labels and see how it works on this device. Its name is my first label, and then I'm gonna let me just copy paste one more, and just here the Apple box. So now I have two labels on screen. Now let's see how they look on iPhone 15 Pro. Okay. So we can see the two labels. Now we have not added any constraint as of now. So if I just change my orientation, then we can see the position of labels are not maintained. So let's see how we can do that first. Let me try to do with this one. I think I'm gonna need to change my recording position. Okay. Uh, let's say I want my labels to be 30 from the left, 30 from the right. And if I want it in the 100 from top, okay. And I'm gonna change property like centrally aligned. And to the second level, there are no constraints. Now let's run and see how it looks. So we can see the first level and second level. If I rotate, the first level has maintained its state because there is an auto layout, which is telling him that he needs to be at center aligned. On the second level, there is nothing. So 
So let's do that to second level also. I'm gonna set 30 from left, 30 from right. And from top, I'm gonna select top level, which is Apple Talks, and then let's say I want it to be 40 pixel gap from the top level. Again, it would be centrally aligned. Now let's run and see. So you can see both labels are appearing really good in shape, completely vertically aligned. Now if I rotate my device, those are still maintaining their position. That's the power of photo layout. But this is only iPhone. So let's see how it looks on iPad. Let's select iPad 11. Okay, so we have iPad on screen and we can see the labels are coming at centrally, sorry, at vertically aligned. If I rotate the iPad, those are still intact. It means our auto light is working, but it's not work looking really good in iPad because the iPad has higher size. It means we need to increase the value of photo layout as per the device. This is only, uh, uh, sorry, this is only applicable whenever you are trying to build something for iPhone and iPad. You don't need to specify different constant value for all the iPhone. It remains same for the iPhone. It's just that for iPad, you need to give some additional spacing. So let's see how we can do that. I'm going to go to the max code. Storyboard again, select the top cap. I had given it 100, but now I'm just going to click right here and click regular, regular and add one more variation. Now the thing is, what is this uh, regular, regular, what is the variation? So, there was one concept in older days called a size class and then it was changed to the trades. It is still in there, but you don't get that option directly in Xcode for now. So uh, basically, uh, as you have different resolution of devices with Apple, you need to you know, select the variation that is applicable for your chosen device. So let's say if I say I want to add something else, then I have options like I do I need to select regular width, compact width, or what if you want to learn what are those then please let me know in comments i will create dedicated video for that but for now let's continue so i'm gonna say i want 200 from top and uh, the left and right why is why i can see okay which i had given 30 i want 60. Here the same, the gap which is 40, I'm going to increase for iPad, let's say it's going to be 140 and 60 for the, oops, 60 for this and again 60 variation for this one, especially for the iPad. Now let's see how it looks on the iPad Pro 11 inch simulator. So you can see the now top gap has increased and also the vertical spacing between these two labels like the apple box and the first label has increased. It means uh, the variation that we have added for the iPad is working. So this is how you can add the basic constraint. Now no, let's see how you can have the multiple UI components. So I'm going to start with having two labels, two text fill and one button. And first we will design it for iPhone. Then we will see how it looks on all the iPhones like iPhone 15, 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. And then we will see how we can enhance those for iPad using auto layout constraints only. First, let me close down this simulator. Um, so, these two levels can stay here. We don't have an issue with that. Or let me delete these two. I'm going to add something else here with interactive design.
let's change font to be uh, semi bold and it will have size of 25 now i'm gonna assign it constant but a bit different way so i'm double clicking on the label scrolling it and leaving on the view so i'll get option whether i want to give leading from speed uh, leading from safe area bottom trailing or top so what is safe area you know so in earlier days when there was no notch available on apple series uh, we have we used to you know, provide a basic constraint in order to top or bottom but with, with notch you know we have that extra 44 pixel on the top so that is also known as a safe area so if you want that notch to be visible when you are creating your design you need to select a safe area but if you want your design to start from the top it means from zero pixel then you need to select the view for now i'm gonna say safe area so it's gonna have a top from safe area then i'm gonna say central horizontally and i think that's it for this one let me add one more label uh, this will also have a central horizontally and it will have top gap of 25 pixel from the label and let me add one more label I was too real. We also have the constraint from the center. Now I am disabling this constraint to margin option because I don't want it to impact my UI. Uh, we will discuss about this in upcoming videos. So now I have set three tables. Now let me select all three. Set the text element to center. Okay now let's just see how it looks on iphone 15 pro before moving forward <coughs> okay so this looks pretty good if i change the orientation it still is the labels are still intact which is good sign now let's try adding some more options maybe some text fields uh, i'll make uh, i want it to start from this so i'm gonna say here it will have 20 left 20 right it will have height of 45 which is standard height and it will have top gap of 50 so there's a 50 uh, gap between ios label and my text field i'm gonna add one more option here let me add 20 20 20 from above uh, or let's say 25 okay as i had copied this text field so this will also have the same height constant as i had given to the first one you can observe it here so now we already have our two text fields okay now let me add one button or maybe we can have two buttons but that will go at the bottom so let me see we from the bottom it will have 10 20 again 20 that's a height of 35 We will name it button one and then one more option here let me move it a bit far so that we can see and then 25 of the gap and this is this will be my button two now let me select both and let some style no i think that intent would be much better and type would be detailed disclosure or let's say it's just add contact so let me just increase the bottom of this one so it looks quite good okay so this is uh, 
how I have designed my UI for now. I know it's very bad, but this is good for understanding purpose. So let's see how it looks on iPhone 15 Pro Simulator. So you can see uh, the labels are in the place. Then we have two text box and then we have two buttons. Now if I rotate my device, then oops, it is messing up because when I rotate my device, the size and the width would be recalculated. So when I'm in the landscape mode, the height of the device is decreased and the width is increased. So that you can see that we are not getting an issue in the width, but the issue is around the height. To fix this, we need to add a scroll wheel. Okay. So we will come to that later on. Okay. Now let's see how this looks on iPad first. So this is looking quite good on iPad. If I rotate, then it's not affecting the UI because we have a lot more height. We have a lot more height in iPad in comparison to the iPhone. Now let's just play with the value for iPad. So let's update the top to be 100. Then let's update this gap to be 50. This is an approximately value that I'm giving. But usually our developers prefers to give you a 1.5 value for iPad. So let's say if my height for button is 10 in iPhone, then it's gonna be 15 in iPad. If my height is 50, then it's gonna be 75 in iPad. So 1.5 into the height of the iPhone is standard for iPad. But again, if you have a proper design available from the designer like Figma or PSD or Adobe XD, then I recommend you to follow that. If you don't have any of such design, then you can use this valuation. Now let's increase the height of this for iPad. The gap should be increased as well. 50. Now let's play with the button. The bottom of button which is 30. I want it to be 60 in my iPad. So I need to select this again. Update as 60. Then the gap between these two, I want it to be bit bit more, uh, you know, bit larger in iPad. So I'm gonna say it's gonna be 50. The button height which is 35, it's really less for iPhone. So I want to make it larger. I'm gonna say 50 for iPad. Oops, I think I did some mistake. So I'm 25 for iPhone. Oh sorry, 35 for iPhone. It made a variation and then it's gonna be 70 for iPad. Similar way here. It's gonna be 70. Now let's see. Okay, so the updated value is reflecting. If I change the orientation, it is also affecting, and my UI is still intact. So the auto layout is working 100% fine. And the best thing is, you don't have any warning on the logs. It means there are no constraint breaking. Yes, sometimes it happens that constraint breaks. If you have given wrong uh, dependency between two components, then your constraint will break and iOS will try to uh, repair that breakage in UI component linear pattern to do that it will disable any of the constraint that it will think it's best to disable and it could have any kind of issue or distortion to your UI so it is very important that whenever you are working with auto layout you don't see you don't have any warning in your logs if you have it's recommended to fix it so that's all on the auto layout if you want to understand how you can have auto layout with scroll view, then do let me know in comments. Thank you.